is ready to go. Okay. What do we got there, babe? This is all of my fiberglass stuff. Ooh, you're so, gonna have some fun, aren't you? This is my biggest project, and I've got several phases I'm gonna do, and Megan and Total Boat have helped us out and given us pretty much everything we need. So, <laughs> yeah, it's exciting and a little scary. <laughs> oh, you got this. <laughs> Today is the start of fiberglass work. Now, I'm gonna start with a project that is a little bit more complicated, but it's hidden from most people's view, and that is this thing right here in the master head. <sighs> this thing, y'all, is installed by the factory, but as you can see around the edges, it gets really gross. It is wet all the time, so it constantly molds, this is pretty much useless because anything you put in here, there's standing water and it's going to get all nasty and moldy and just gross. So, we are going to take this out and fiberglass over this wall. Now, one thing we're concerned about is if this is the access to the um, hot and cold water and stuff like that. So, I'm going to pull this out and we're going to see what's behind it. cleaned up the fiberglass around this hole, not perfectly, but I've got uh, chemicals that I'll use on that later. So the next step I'm going to take is to put plastic sheeting all through this area so that I can prevent the fiberglass dust from getting into the rest of the boat. Fun! I may have gone a little bit overboard. I've basically built myself a little fort here, but we are Pretty much good to go on here for this point. Thanks to the magic of film, I am uh, cleaned up. The bathroom is clean, all of the plastic is taken down, and here's my grinding! Ta-da! So it was a little bit, a lot messier than I thought it would be. The sander that I picked didn't really do a good job of vacuuming up pretty much anything. And uh, fiberglass dust kind of got everywhere, which meant it was a really good thing I was fully kitted out. And we closed me up in here. And, um, other than that, I think it went pretty well. I had to apply a lot more force than I thought, too. But I think we are nicely ground down and ready to move on to the next step, which is the backing. The backing isn't structural. Its purpose is to give me a surface on which to lay fiberglass into the existing structure. To build the backing, I covered my plywood workstation with plastic and then coated three layers of fiberglass cloth with laminating resin. I let it dry, and thankfully it peeled right off the plastic. Okay, this actually came out pretty nicely. I need to trim the edges where the resin went past the fiberglass mat, and then and it's quite sticky because it's laminating resin and not finishing resin. Um, so then sand around the edges and see how it fits. To mount the backing, I inserted two screws into the fiberglass. Unfortunately, the tacky resin kept sticking to the plastic. Next time, remove the plastic first. Next, I mixed up some thickened epoxy. In hindsight, I could have done this with the polyester laminating resin too. I mixed the epoxy with the hardener, and then once it was thoroughly mixed, I added in silica thickener. I was aiming for a thick, peanut butter-like consistency. Once I had it thick enough, I spread the mixture on the sanded edges of the backing. Once that was ready to go, I inserted the backing into the hole and applied pressure to keep the backing in place. Next time, I would tie the string to the screws of the backing first, and once the backing is in place, 
I'd tie the other end off to hold it in. I used several strings at different angles to hold it into the right spot. Once I was happy with the position, I wiped off the excess epoxy. It is the next day, as you can tell by my attire. We've had a cold front, so it's gotten a little chillier here. But it's time for me to check in on my spider web and see how the backing dried overnight. So let's take a look, y'all. All right, we're going in. We're going under. Oh, okay. So here's my fiberglass backing. I definitely used too much epoxy. And although I swept the edges a little bit, I missed this spot here, which I'm gonna have to sand down. But it's looking pretty good. So today I'm going to take these screws out, undo all this string, and then I'm gonna start laying fiberglass inside the cut and then uh, gently doing a gradient outside and uh, we will see how it looks. like you're having way too much fun in there. What are you doing? <laughs> right, well the backing set, so now I'm cutting the fiberglass mat and um, kind of getting it just a size to fill in the, the mat and the cloth. Ah. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Uh, so this is the mat and then this is the cloth and according to the book you start with mat and you alternate layers I've cut four things of mat and just two things of cloth right now, which I probably won't get to both of them today, or all of them today, but it's a start, so. So layer um, by layer, kind of build it up, yeah? Layer by layer, build it up. So I'm almost done trimming all of the pieces, and then I will mix the resin and start applying layers. Woohoo! that's exciting. Yes, it is. applied seven layers of fiberglass to this hole. So the hole is gone, it's all fiberglass, and that's very exciting. I did get a little stuck on what to do next. A lot of the videos that I watched were laying the fiberglass down, and then a completely separate video would be about doing gel coat. So there's kind of steps in between. So I went directly to the source and emailed Total Boats Tech Support and said, hey, I'm getting confused about what the steps are in between. Can you tell me what I need to do? And they said that the first step would be to put on a finishing resin. I kind of suspected that was the case, but not a lot of my resources talked about using a finishing resin. The, the pros of using a laminating resin is that you don't have to sand in between the coats. So I could literally just wet, a, wet the fiberglass that I'd done the day before and lay the next layer down and then you know, keep wetting it. The finishing resin does cure in the air and you, will, you would have to sand it down if you were going to laminate more on top of it. Then the Total Boat rep told me that the next step is to sand all of the fiberglass down and you're kind of trying to like smooth everything out. I used a 100 grit sandpaper with my orbital sander 
And then the next step is to apply farine compound. Farine compound is mixed with 14 drops of hardener to one ounce of putty. In retrospect, the farine compound is the hardest part. The goal is to get just the right amount on so that it's slightly recessed from the surrounding gel coat. If you get too much farine compound on, you have to sand a lot in order to get it flat. And if you don't get it low enough, you'll sand through your layers of gel coat in an attempt to level the surface. If you put too little on or sand it down too much, then when you sand the gel coat down, the edges of the fiberglass will show through and you'll have to apply more layers of gel coat on. I have put my tent back up again, but I've done it a little differently this time. Last time I closed myself in the entire head. This time I just closed myself into the shower area. So it's, I've literally covered everything in here and it's a much smaller space to work in, but it also means I don't have to clean as much, which is better. So let's go in and take a look at my hardened Fairy compound. Oh yeah, always trying to protect my hair because dust is absolutely everywhere inside this tent. So I'm fully, fully suited up. Mm -hmm. My fairing compound looks, I don't know, this spot isn't super great, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Actually, I'm kind of impressed with how smooth I was able to get it, which means less work when I have to sand this down in a few minutes. So, yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. After another round of sanding, attempting to get the surface to just the right height, I took my sanding booth down again. Oh, how optimistic I was. Okay. Look like you're working hard in there, babe. Yes, indeed I am. <laughs> Staying out of the sun, huh? Staying out of the sun. So the color match looks pretty good. Um, of course, it's hard to tell exactly until you buff and gloss it. But I think it's going to be good enough for the shower. And uh, if we feel like it needs to be better anywhere else, then we'll work on it. But for okay. now, I think we're good. So this is the gel coat, yeah? This is the gel coat that I'm mixing up with the catalyst. That's what you were just adding, yes? Yep, I just added the catalyst, and now I'm going to paint the gel coat on. I actually thought the gel coat would be more of like a putty, um, but apparently that's an entirely different product. So. Okay, so this is like a paint paint. This is like a paint paint, yeah. Wow. Um, well, it's a little bit thicker than paint, I think. I don't know, it's been a while since I've painted other than my watercolors, to be honest. That's true. But the plan is to paint this, let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow starts the hand sanding. So I have a sanding block and I have several different layer, uh, several different grits of sandpaper. So we are going to get it down to a smooth finish and then buff it. Of the many mistakes that I have made on this project, this might be the biggest one and it sucks. I got back and checked on the gel coat after letting it set overnight and there are cracks in the hardened gel coat. I am in talks with Total Boat to figure out what exactly I did wrong and we don't really know yet. But bottom line is I have to scrape off the gel coat and refair, resand, reapply gel coat and hopefully do it right this time. There are a couple things that I suspect might have been the issue or like a combination of things that might have been the issue, but I'm hoping next time you see my face, I will have an answer. It has been a few days now, and I have used a heat gun to take off the old gel, not the old gel coat. I have used a heat gun to take off the bad gel coat, and then sanded and laid down finishing resin, 
and then farine compound, and then sand it. So I'm back where I started. Now, where I think we went wrong, a couple things. The Charlotte at Total Boat tech support was super helpful, and she recommended that I use a little bit less catalyst because of the heat. Even though I use what it says in the bottle, she said maybe try a little bit less. I'm going to apply a thinner layer than I had before using a roller instead of a paintbrush. I do think that my paintbrush would be... Y'all, don't skimp on paintbrushes. Um, yeah, should have bought a nice one. So then what else? I think that's about it. Fairing compounds, nice and flat. I just cleaned it off with acetone. I'm going to take this down, clean it with acetone again, give it some time to dry, and then lay down a layer of the gel coat. And hopefully, tomorrow when I show up, it will look fantastic, and I'll be almost done. I have applied the gel coat with a roller. It definitely went on thinner and more evenly, but it was almost like too thin. So what I have learned now is that you can let the gel coat dry to like tackiness and then mix up another batch of gel coat and reapply over that. If you let it dry all the way, you have to, because I'm using gel coat with wax, you have to de-wax it, sand it, clean it again, and then apply a new coat of gel coat. So better to get as many coats of gel coat on after tack dry as you can. So. I'm applying more, and I think we are just about done, I keep saying that. That is now three coats of gel coat, so I'm going to let this dry. Today is actually Saturday, and we try really hard not to come to the boatyard on Sunday, so I will let this dry until Monday morning, and then hopefully I can sand it appropriately, and I think a day of sanding, and then I might be done keep saying that. It's terrible, y'all. Terrible. But I'm pretty confident. I think the gel coat looks good. The gel coat paint looks good way better than the last time. So, that's a pro. It's a shoulder workout. Yeah, looks like a lot of fun, yeah? Oh, I'm having a blast. I mean, it's just written all over your face. <laughs> Since I can definitely see emotions in those eyes. <laughs> oh, I just... I laughed and saw a cloud of um, <laughs> gel coat dust. Poop out, everywhere. Poop out. Lovely. Yeah. Gel coat dust is the worst. Yeah, it does seem to get literally everywhere. Yeah. I mean, with the sander, it was like a poof everywhere. These, the orbital sander, I mean. The manual sander is not so bad. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Still notice you're not in your marshmallow me. suit, so. I'm not in my marshmallow suit. My, uh, what's the... The um, Michelin Man. Michelin yeah, Man that's the one. <laughs> I am calling it done on the 120 sandpaper. I think that it's looking pretty good. It's a little hard to tell like what's going <clears> to <throat> buff out as you keep going. And like I know the gel coat itself is going to change color a little bit as I go through the process. So anyway, I've got my... Next sandpaper ones lined up. So this is um, 220, this is 400, this is 600, and so I will keep progressing through these and I will update you when I'm done with the 220 and we see how that looks. This is my very sophisticated setup for doing wet sanding in the boat. Plastic is basically like a slide and the water that runs off the fiberglass that I'm working on goes down and do this slide into the trash can and I can change out the water as often as I need to. So wet dry round with 240, nope, 220 grit sandpaper and then next I've got 400 and then 600 and then buffing compound. So yeah, making progress. And here we have it. I am officially done with this project. The finish looks really good, like it's very smooth. 
I'm impressed that just like that I did this basically. <laughs> learning how to do gel coat and learning how to do fiberglass has definitely given us confidence outside of the scope of this project. So now we are looking at little dings on the boat in the gel coat and saying, oh, I can fix that. Or we're looking at holes in the boat that uh, we don't need anymore. And I am much more willing to say, well, I can fix that. And another thing is that like, it removes a fear of screwing your fiberglass or gel coat up somewhere. So David and I are now, I feel, much more willing to cut into gel coat or fiberglass or figure take some step in a project that we would have been concerned to do earlier because we would have to bring in a professional to fix it. But now I know that right now I have the tools and I have the skill set to fix any blunder that we make with fiberglass and gel coat. So that's really empowering and kind of awesome. I'm really glad I did it. Thank you again to Total Boat for all of the products that they supplied me with that were very helpful and I was really impressed with the quality of the products as well as the tech support when I called and emailed, especially Charlotte and Paul, thank y'all. And also I wanna thank Boatworks Today Andy at Boatworks Today, who does a ton of videos on these type of projects. And it, while there wasn't one all-encompassing video that worked for this project because I'm working with polyester and I'm finishing with gel coat, I was able to piece this project together using Boatworks Today and also the book that I have physically on board, Don Casey's book. So thanks to both those uh, resources and I really recommend checking those out. There's links down below to Boatworks Today, the book, Total Boat, basically everything I used in this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, comments, and feedbacks, drop them in the comments box below. And I look forward to sharing my next project with you. Bye.